Hey jazz fanatics, today I'd like to discuss a topic that continues to elude many musicians regardless of experience and that is simply how to sell CDs on gigs tactfully. You're going to want to watch to the end of this video, all five minutes or so, because the tips that I'm going to share with you are not theory. They have actually worked and I believe that if you apply them they will help you in selling more CDs at your gigs. Let's face it, CDs today are little more than souvenirs and we really have about five to ten minutes after the set to capitalize on people's excitement because that's the time period that they're going to decide whether or not to take one home. Now I realize that many musicians are still very uncomfortable selling their products but the fact is you did have to sell yourself just to book the gig, right? So why not pay yourself a bonus by moving some of your CDs? As I mentioned in my last episode regarding how to better relate to an audience, if you've been talking to your audience sparingly and creating rapport, then it's much easier to ask them to take a CD home. Sadly, I still see too many experienced musicians drop the ball on this. It's not enough to say at the end of the set, uh, well, uh, we have CDs if, uh, um, well, if anybody's interested. Here's one recent example of how I promote my CDs. Last time I was here, about three quarters of you were not from this country. Who's, who's not from the United States here? <laughs> At least half, right? And I, I've, I've noticed that since uh, Smalls has become an international tourist destination, that more people stand right where I am so they can take a picture with Louis Armstrong. So, but tonight we'd like to give you another souvenir to take home. <laughs> For those of you under 30, this is a CD. <laughs> so, and the great part about this is, Spike has his whole catalog for $10, I think in the back, he still has it there. But I'm offering, we have five different CDs. Each one is $10 each. If you want more than two, they're $5 each. So it's a good price. It's better than iTunes. And you get my smiling face and over five CDs, you actually see my gentle age progression. <laughs> right after the set, I sold 20 CDs. And I find that if you use a little bit of creativity and a little bit of humor, you don't put people off. Instead, they're more likely to take one home with them. Now the first tip should be obvious. If you want to sell your CDs, you have to mostly play the music that's on the CDs. Yes, I want to keep it fresh for everyone, and I want to play new music, especially if I'm preparing for a new recording, but I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me after the set, tell me they really like a specific tune, and ask which CD that is on. And I have to tell them, uh, well, it's not. Then I have to backtrack and convince them why they should buy the CDs anyway. Now if you follow this idea, then and only then can you say to your audience towards the end of the set, if you have enjoyed the music tonight, you are in luck. Because most of it has been recorded on one of the CDs that I have available tonight. Just come up and ask me your, what your favorite song is and I'll tell you which CD it's on. Now if you remember from the video, while I'm talking, I actually hold up a copy of the CDs. Why? Because people are visual. That's what they're going to respond to. And since they are souvenirs, offer to sign them. Now in the comments section, I'd like to hear what's been working for you. What have you been saying and what have you been doing on your gigs to make your CDs more attractive? And if you're enjoying this series on music business, how to relate to audiences selling your CDs, as well as the other videos I have on beginning in jazz improvisation, by all means subscribe, because unlike my CDs, it's free.